since we know, businesses have been greatly impacted by this pandemic. Many have closed. Many more are struggling. As federal lawmakers work on relief packages to help struggling businesses, Minnesota Congresswoman Angie Craig is meeting with Minnesota mayors to get input from them on the needs within their own communities. Congresswoman, you uh, were in different communities today. Talk to me about what you're hearing. Well, I was in uh, several communities today. I was in Red Wing, I was in Wabasha, and I was in Zambroda. And look, what I'm hearing is it depends on the industry as to how hard each business has been hit. The restaurant industry sector has been hit hard, retail businesses, hospitality. And so, you know, as the Senate comes back this week, as the House reconvenes next week, my main message back to leadership is going to be we have got to come together and uh, pass another relief package for American businesses. From the mayors that you're speaking to, I know that Red Wing is very different from Zambroda, Wabasha as well. Uh, what is it in those specific communities that you are hearing today that their needs are, uh, or their frustrations, or what they're happy with, and what they're seeing? Well, they're all happy that they've been able to reopen, even if it is at reduced capacity. And to some degree, because we've got these, you know, great downtown Main Street areas, you're starting to see day trippers who are, uh, you know, just ready to be out and about a little bit, uh, more comfortable coming to small towns throughout the district. So I heard a lot of that. Um, but what they're concerned about here is, is the weather changes, as capacity, particularly for restaurants, uh, continues to decrease. That, you know, there is very much a concern that uh, the federal government needs to prioritize those hardest hit businesses. You know, I've introduced legislation that would allow uh, small businesses that have been really impacted, like retail and restaurant uh, owners, to come back and get a second. PPP loan, forgivable loan, in order to keep in business. I'm hearing from a number of businesses that uh, another three to six months of this kind of reduced capacity could literally put them out of business. So I think the federal government needs to stay flexible. Uh, the virus is really going to determine what we need to do next. Uh, but at the end of the day, what we need to do more than anything is get back to Washington uh, and sit down across the aisle and work out um, a bill. Probably both sides uh, won't be completely happy with it, but, um, you know, we need to come together and figure out uh, what that next relief package is going to be. Seen uh, some compromise and some aid that has passed in the last six months. What is it that is going to be the top priority? I was hearing today that a stimulus package for all families across the country is likely not going to happen this time around. Well, you're exactly right. We've been able to come together three times now on a bipartisan basis, and I've been very, very proud that we've been able to do that. You know, my biggest concern right now is as we think about, um, you know, getting back to school, as we think about keeping our economy open, uh, I worry about education funding, I worry about transportation funding, you know, the very things that, that will help us get back to positive GDP growth. I worry about our states having to make significant cuts and start to lay people off, furlough first responders, healthcare workers. So. A huge priority has been state and local government assistance. Some of that's gone out. I think we're going to have to think about a little bit more of that. And then, of course, the hardest hit businesses are going to need our help. I serve on the Small Business Committee, and it's been a high priority for me to keep as many of these Main Street mom and pop shops operating as possible because that's the only way once we get out of COVID-19 that we're going to be able to get to positive GDP growth again quickly. As we know, uh, transportation you just mentioned is uh, uh, Non-COVID, non-pandemic times, transportation is something that we hear so much about um, as the session, as Congress and the Senate, as they go back into session. But what I am wondering is how involved you are on the state level, because as we uh, did not pass a bonding bill, have you talked to our governor, and are you working with anything that he tells you and taking it to Washington with you? Well, I've certainly stayed in good touch with the governor and with uh, local leaders on the need for a bonding bill. I'm 
cautiously optimistic uh, that we are going to be able to come to some sort of agreement uh, at the state level on a bonding bill. Um, and, and I'm absolutely committed at the federal level uh, to uh, a, a, a transportation and infrastructure bill. Uh, the House has already passed surface transportation. And of course, as I was driving on 52 today, uh, coming back, it always is a reminder that that is a huge priority in my congressional district. I was just um, uh, in uh, other parts of the district over the last couple of weeks getting a good update. Uh, for example, the Sturgeon Lake uh, road project in Red Wing and right there by the Prairie Island uh, Indian community, uh, US 169. I mean, all of these are huge priorities. And uh, the Senate uh, has not passed surface transportation uh, funding. The House has. We need the Senate to get back uh, produce surface transportation bill, and we need to make sure that we are investing. This is just a great way to stimulate the economy, our local economies, because it's local jobs if we invest in transportation and infrastructure. There's so much more I want to talk to you about, including uh, the speeding up of getting a vaccine out in our communities, uh, the election that's coming up, but we don't have time. Hopefully, I can speak with you in the next week or two, and we can bring up some more of these issues, especially as you head back to Washington. Thank you so much. And uh, really just, uh, I'm very, very pleased with uh, how optimistic our business owners have remained, but there's still a lot of stress and anxiety out there and we need to continue to support them. Thank you for all your work, Congresswoman. We'll speak again soon.